As the citizens of the metro stations in post-apocalyptic Russia struggle to survive in this hostile new world, fighting off mutated creatures from the surface, they will go on to encounter a creature that will come across as one of the most deadly creatures humanity has ever seen. A bipedal human looking creature that lurks in the dark. A creature that is there one minute in the corner of your eye, but when you try to get close to it or get a better look, it is gone. Despite only being witnessed a few times before the events of 2033, humanity will tell stories of this creature. It will be known throughout the stations as the Boogie Monster, the creature under your bed that seeks to destroy everything in its path, and it will be the downfall of humanity as we know it. Just witnessing one of these creatures, you will start to hallucinate visions as they are able to mind control the humans of the metro stations. These creatures would be labelled as the next stage in human evolution, called the Homo Novus, translating to new humans. But others would label them something far more sinister as they believe them to be the biggest threat to their livelihoods. These people would call them the Dark Ones. But who or what are the Dark Ones? Where did they come from? What were their intentions and what was their fate? Well, in today's video, Video, we look at the Homo Novus and seek to uncover their story. This is the law behind the Homo Novus, otherwise known as the Dark Ones. After the nuclear bombs had fallen across the world after the Great War of 2013, the world fell silent with an unknown amount of humans left living on the surface or below. The radiation filled the air, making it almost unlivable in the main cities where humanity once thrived. Whilst the remaining humans seek shelter within the old metro tunnels of Moscow, on the surface, creatures started to mutate, turning them into deadly beasts with razor-sharp claws, huge wings, and a craving for any food they could find. Not only was the surface now hazardous because of the radiation, but now moving into the decade of 2020, the world was filled with deadly creatures. It is unsure how the Dark Ones officially came about. No record has been made stating when exactly they first emerged or how they mutated from what was likely humans, but a lot of theories have come about linking to their origins. The first is a very rare theory that during the events of the Great War of 2013, along with the 20,000 warheads that were launched across the world, some contained mutagens that were designed to mutate take creatures and humans into vicious killing creatures that would slaughter anyone in their path. This theory would lead to the mutating of not only the everyday creatures of the earth like dogs, catfishes, apes and bears into deadly mutants, but it would also mutate humans into these tall, slender, blackened beings with piercing black eyes, no mouth or ears, and three immensely long fingers and a thumb. The idea behind the Homo Novus would be to eliminate enemy forces and win the war for whoever sent the bombs. However, this theory does seem to have many flaws, especially as the counter theory states that they did not originate from the Earth's surface, but in fact within an area called Sector D6. Before the Great War, D6 was a research facility that was said to experiment on humans. During the war and after it had ended, the sector was forgotten about and the contents of what was inside was abandoned. It was rumoured and loosely reported that months or a couple of years after the events of 2013, D6 opened up and the Dark ones who had been living within there had left to seek refuge up on the Earth's surface. This documentation would suggest that whilst they hadn't been mutated by the warheads themselves, humans could have in fact been the ones who created these creatures through their biological research. Maybe they were indeed created as a superhuman soldier that would eventually be used to attack their enemies. But the experiment went wrong or changed with the radiation and instead turned them into dark ones, left to sit and wait within Sector D6 until they were let loose. Regardless, by the mid-decade of the 2010s, the Dark Ones were living on the surface among the other mutants. They built up their home within the botanical gardens above the metro station located there. There they lived away from anyone or anything as mutants scared to go near them left them to their actions. Their homes, which looked like beehives, stood out if seen from above but up until this point, no one knew of their existence and they would live there in peace, at least until around the year of 2015.
It is around 2015, and humanity has lived under the surface for around two years, slowly building up their resources and their own little communities. The Stalkers make their way up to the surface as the first fully established scavengers to help with society, and unique Metro-made weapons were being created to help fend off against mutants. During this time, three children living in the VDNKH Metro were seen playing and exploring the tunnels on multiple occasions. These children were Eugene, Vitaly, and Artyom, all aged around six years old. As they explore the tunnels, it is clear that Artyom wants to go and see the surface to see what life out there is like. They venture through and get to the large doors of the surface. The doors slowly open, and the light from the outside fills where they stand in an almost blinding gaze. The three children walk through and witness the ruins of the world around them, but almost immediately they are attacked by a pack of dogs, or in some tellings, watchers. Unarmed and defenceless, the children were cornered and are likely to be killed by these mutants. Eugene and Vitaly run back into the metro as Artyom is left to face these creatures, but before they attack him, a Dark One appears in front of them to fend off the attacking mutants. After the Dark One scares away the Watchers or dogs, he turns to Artyom using its telepathic ability to look at Artyom's morality. After sensing Artyom is good-natured, the Dark Ones decide to adopt Artyom into their fold. The idea behind this was to one day use Artyom as the bridge between humans and the Dark Ones, eventually helping the two races to make peace between one another. With the Dark One's help, no one could harm Artyom. He would be protected by them from physical harm and also any mental danger he may suffer in the future. After their encounter, however, Artyom's memory was wiped. He forgot all about the Dark Ones, as well as what they looked like, but somehow remembered his journey up to the surface. Throughout his life, however, he always felt like there was something there, watching him and looking over him, almost like a guardian angel. Artyom would later return to the Metro to live his life without remembering anything of this first encounter with the Dark Ones, but this venture up to the surface also left the door open for the Dark Ones to enter the Metro. It was here where they would venture down to explore, but also to try and make peace with the humans. But this would lead to their downfall. With the doors of the Metro now open to the outside world where the Dark Ones had been based, the Homo Novus now had a gateway into the communities of the Metro. The Dark Ones, however, were always peaceful creatures. Whilst they look extremely intimidating, have a pretty eerie voice, and can use telepathy to confuse, disorientate, and if need be, kill anything that attacks them, the Dark Ones only wanted to live in peace, away from the endless war that had surrounded them. Now the Dark Ones had been venturing down into the dark tunnels of the Metro, a few of the civilians down in the community had stated that they had witnessed these terrifying creatures stalking in the dark and in the shadows almost like a ghost. The VDNKH station, the one Artyom lived in, was the first they ventured through, making contact with humans. The Dark Ones simply wanted to walk into the station as they desired to live in a symbiotic society where Homo sapiens and Homo novus could live peacefully together, helping each other to rebuild society society and defend from the mutants of the surface. However, with the Dark Ones just simply walking up to the guards, the Metro soldiers were terrified of this new creature, not knowing what it was capable of. Almost immediately, the guards would open fire on these creatures, believing them to be extremely hostile and no different to those other creatures of the surface. The Dark Ones did not want to harm them, however, and as stated in the Gospel according to Artyom, the Dark Ones never intended for the death of humans, yet their very presence and psychic influence drove the humans mad, and because of it, they subsequently killed each other. Because of these so-called attacks becoming more frequent within the metro stations, a ranger under the name of Hunter arrives in VDNKH to alert the others of this upcoming threat. Eventually, he hires Artyom, the Dark One's unaware adopted human, to seek what they truly want and to try and stop them from taking over the metros. Throughout Artyom's journey during the year of 2033, the Dark Ones would try and promote peaceful messages into Artyom's head to show him that the Dark Ones were indeed peaceful and did not seek war. These images would be things like a pre-war playground filled with playful children enjoying life, like he did before the war. It is also said that during his journey, Artyom would be sent protectors by the Dark Ones that would look out for him if he was in a dire situation. For example, the Spartans who helped him when he was captured by the extremist forces who held him at gunpoint. What might look like insane plot armor could in fact have been thanks to the actions of the Dark Ones as they seek to help Artyom 
on his journey to make peace with them. On Artyom's journey, it is revealed that the only way the humans feel they can live in peace is if they destroy the Dark Ones, as they are too much of a threat to their existence. Elite Stalker, Ranger Colonel, Melnik and Milner conceive that they can be stopped by a missile strike to their home. This can only be done by heading to Sector D6. After a long and painful journey through not only the wasteland of Moscow, but the horrifying experiments of D6, Artyom makes his way to the Ostenkino Tower to finally put this threat to rest and destroy the Dark Ones once and for all. When Artyom gets up to the tower, getting ready to take them out with the rocket, Artyom states he looked out to see them moving around their beehive much like ants around the nest. After setting up the tracking for the missile, Artyom is said to be desperately contacted by the Dark Ones, pleading to him to stop what he was doing, trying to explain that he was their adopted chosen one, and his destiny was to unite the humans and the Dark Ones. In the documents of the event, it is stated, Artyom knew what he would see and understood that now he must not fear it, and therefore he simply lifted his head and looked at the huge black eyes without whites or pupils, and then he heard it. You are the chosen one. The world had been turned upside down. In those unfathomable eyes, he suddenly saw in a fraction of a second the answer to everything that had for him, been left incomprehensible and inexplicable. The answer to all his doubts, hesitation and search. And the answer turned out to be not what Artyom had been expecting. After realising that all the Dark Ones had wanted was peace between humans, Artyom had a vision of him shooting down the rocket tracker, saving the Dark Ones from annihilation. There would be peace between the two races, but sadly, this was not his true fate. After realising his purpose, it was too late. The missiles had been launched, and the home the Dark Ones lived in was annihilated, wiping them all out. The Dark Ones had come to an end, which deeply affected Artyom's mental state, leaving him conflicted and mortified. While some documentation states that the Dark Ones became extremely hostile to Artyom before this moment, physically assaulting him and trying to kill him through psychic visions, it is believed that truly all they wanted to do was convince him that he was there to make peace between the two races. After the bombs had gone off and the humans celebrated their obliteration of this peaceful species, everyone went back to the Metro, believing the Dark Ones to be gone forever, never to threaten their world again. However, this was not the end of the Homo Novus race. After the bombs had fallen once again, the city had been wiped of all Dark Ones from the surface. Or so it was thought. In amongst the devastated wreckage of what they once called home, a baby Dark One was seen as being still alive, hidden away from the attack the rest of their race faced. News quickly surfaced about the Dark One, and the Rangers ordered Artyom and Anna to be the ones who were to take it out, to make sure it would not cause any harm to the humans of the Metro. However, before they could do anything, the baby Dark One escaped its captivity, but not for long. Escaping Artyom and Anna would lead to it to be captured by the Nazis, an extremist faction within the metro stations who were in a brutal war with the Red Line, the communist army. The Dark One tried desperately to escape, using its psychic abilities on the soldiers, showing him images of his son. This would not end well for the Dark One, as it was then sold on to a freak circus. However, this did spare it from the Nazi firing line. More and more news about this Dark One had spread throughout the metros, however, and word soon spread to the Red Line, specifically General Corbett, who wanted to originally create an army of domesticated Dark Ones for his army. With all factions seeking this Dark One, the station went into a huge open conflict with both Red Line and Nazis seeking to take over the metro. Eventually, Artyom and fellow Ranger Khan rescued the Dark One from the Radical Factions. Despite being labelled with the task of killing the Dark One at the start of his journey, the effects of his actions in 2033 led to Artyom sparing the baby Dark One, as he wanted to get to know it more. During their journey, Artyom expresses his regrets over the destruction of the Dark Ones in 2033, and because of it is able to strike up a close bond with the remaining Dark One, who also experienced what it's like to be human. Travelling through the metro stations and the surface once again, Artyom helps convince others such as Miller that the Dark Ones only seek peace. Going into D6 once again however, Artyom and Khan discover D6's best kept secret. They discover that D6 is filled with a nest of hibernating Dark Ones. The race of Homo Novus still lives. 
The Baby Dark One decides to leave Artyom's side as the battle for D6 begins, trying to save his surviving kin. As the battle rages on, it looks like certain doom for Artyom and his fellow Spartans. He has a vision at one point during this of him detonating the whole of D6, wiping it out completely. However, his fate does not lead to this. Instead, just before he does, the Baby Dark One appears in front of him and stops him from detonating this sector, stating, no need for that now. After that, the Baby Dark One summons his elder kin to help the Spartans in the battle for D6. Artyom and some of his Spartans survive the battle and make it out of there alive, regarding the Dark Ones as their angels. But for the Dark Ones, their time with the humans of the Metro is up. After the battle, the Baby Dark One says to Artyom that it will be better for everyone if we go away, but one day we will come back. I'll be big then. Goodbye, my friend. The Baby Dark One and his kin disappear into the sunset leaving Artyom alone to return back to the Metro. Whilst the Dark Ones do indeed live on, their presence within Moscow and the home of Artyom is no more. It is clear that the violent nature of the humans and their radical movements meant that they were a huge threat, and the Dark Ones didn't want to play a part in that war. The year is 2035, and the Dark Ones are still nowhere to be seen. As Artyom finds the secret about the outside world, he and his fellow Spartans venture through the wasteland of Russia, searching for a new home and world. During his journey, he doesn't fully encounter his peaceful friends of the Homo Novus, and we do not know where they have ventured off to. All we know is, they will return at some point to rebuild society with the humans. However, during his journey, he does encounter glimpses of Dark Ones especially in Novosibirsk, where he spots one in the flooded metro. Are these real sightings of Dark Ones? Are they now based in Novosibirsk? Or are these just hallucinations as Artyom is desperate to find a new home? However, on top of that, during his journey, Artyom is thankfully saved a few times, somewhat reminiscent of his luck during the years of 2033 and 2034. After falling from a building, Miller is able to find Artyom by sheer luck, with even Miller stating he did not know how he found him. It was in this location where one of the Dark Ones is spotted, and it is stated that Miller believes he saw one of them watching over him. Artyom, can you hear me? I think I saw that Dark One on the way here. I might have been seeing things, but what if I wasn't? So stay with me! Maybe Novosibirsk is where the Dark Ones are now living. Maybe they are following Artyom during these adventures, but stay back because of the ongoing battles he finds himself fighting in. Novosibirsk would be ideal for them, as the habitat is extremely toxic for humans, meaning they could be left completely alone. For now though, the Dark Ones do live, and they are free to live peacefully and repopulate. At some time, they will return, but when and where is completely unknown. And that is the full lore behind the Dark Ones up until Metro Exodus. Maybe one day we will see them in a book or a game again, but for now they are just a shadow in a corner, and it is unknown if that was truly them or just a hallucination. Did you enjoy this full look at the Dark Ones, and do you have any theories on them at all? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching this video, I had so much fun making this, as I absolutely love the Metro games and its lore. If you want to support this channel, I'll leave my Twitter and Discord links in the description below, along with my Twitter where I stream every Sunday. I'll also leave the link to my Patreon if you want to financially support me on there. And speaking of Patreon, I want to quickly thank my supporters there. Big thanks to our big fish, Mr. Duquesne23, our sharks, JP and Dylan, and our four huge megalodons, Sinus, Morgan Brazier, JJD896, and Wow Such Gaming. Also a big shout out to our YouTube channel member, Jambu, for his and their ongoing support. It truly means the world that you support me. Honestly, it really does. But that is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.